Charles Robinson from Yahoo Sports, Jim Trotter from NFL Network, uh, chopping it up on you pod to win the game hosted by Charles Robinson on Yahoo in reaction to uh, Baker Mayfield on the uh, what was it that you never know podcast in which he decided to bear yeah. his soul. Uh, what if anything Charles is cooking on the Baker Mayfield front? Well, so it's, it's interesting what's going on right now. Um, I think Carolina, I think it was interesting because Carolina a few days back um, had someone who I know very dialed in and he said to me, Hey, keep an eye out. It's going to leak. Um, tomorrow that Carolina now is probably leaning into one of the veterans. So either Baker Mayfield and, and Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, the next day, a beat writer on uh, the Panthers beat came out and said, I think it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo or, or Baker Mayfield. And it leads you to believe that there's there's a reason why Carolina is operating this way, where where they're starting to let it leak out that they've gotten a chance to look at some of the rookie quarterbacks and might be leaning more back into the veterans. Given the time of year it is, I, I don't know what's true or what's not. I mean, like, are they doing that because they do have someone in mind at six and they're getting nervous that maybe a team might be inclined to move ahead of them at six for a quarterback that they may like? Um, are they posting a flag up? Which I tend to think this is the reason why. I think Carolina, you kind of put that out there because you're attempting to motivate the Cleveland Browns and say, pay some of the salary already so we can get a deal done, okay? Like we don't want to pay full freight on this guy. We don't want to owe him um, 18 million plus. Figure out how much of the salary you're willing to eat and let's, let's talk about a late draft pick and, and get this thing done already. Um, I saw that Mary Kay Cabot out of Cleveland reported she thinks that, you know, Carolina is the team with the inside track. I, I would say that I agree with that um, because I think that Carolina, when you talk to people in that building, they're not necessarily afraid of the salary stack. They essentially look at Sam Darnold, who's making 18 million plus. They look at Baker making 18 million plus, and they're saying, okay, look, we have 30, I think they have about $30 million in cap room in April, mid April. Pretty convenient. <laughs> so they could add either uh, Jimmy Garoppolo or uh, Baker Mayfield and, you know, be able to stack that salary. So I, I just think Baker, when you compare it to Jimmy, Baker is the younger player with probably the, the maybe a little bit less, a little bit more in front of him, a little more ceiling that maybe we haven't seen yet. Um, but I, look, it just comes down to, I think at this point, Cleveland telling teams we're willing to eat a sizable portion of the salary, portion of the salary and take, um, a pretty late pick to get this guy off our plate. I think that would probably move him a little more quickly now. All right. Hey, Charles in the poker game. Who's got the most poise Baker Carolina Cleveland in the front. I like the front office. Like who who's who's got the most poise right now because uh, part of me says man if I'm Andrew Barry I got guaranteed money to Deshaun Watson mm -hmm. no matter what happens right and I got this 18 million dollar albatross on my books right now yeah I think I'll be able to move them but ooh it's April and like who, who's got the most poise well I wouldn't say it's Baker because he's already spoken a, a couple of times here. Okay, and his representatives have already spoken a couple of times, and I don't think that's necessarily helping to facilitate the process. And as Jim Trotter said, and Jim Trotter, man, you you have him on; he comes heavy every time. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I I love talking to Jim because Jim just cuts right to it. He's I don't think Baker's helping himself by repeatedly airing, you know, his feelings now before any trade is even completed. Like I could understand if a trade gets done and Baker says, "Okay, I'm going to go ahead and button up." the whole Cleveland experience, be done with it, move forward with this team. You're not on your next team yet. So continue, continuing to air things out is just putting more information into the system right now at a time where it doesn't help facilitate a trade. Um, I think I think in some respects, Cleveland probably has the best poker face here because the way Cleveland looks at this, and I don't think a lot of people have talked about this, is a lot of teams are out there saying, well, they're going to have to cut him. They're going to have to cut him because it's an untenable situation with the quarterback room right now. But when Cleveland looks at it, they say w the money's guaranteed. Like we owe him the money no matter what. Why would we cut him and give him give him a shot to become a free agent out there and have to pay him anyway? We might as well just sit, wait and see if the market comes to us because we're on the hook for the money as it is. And if Baker 
wants to advance it out there and, and force himself off the roster, he could potentially do something to void that guaranteed salary. Okay. That is something that can occur. So if Baker says, I'm going to go scorched earth, Cleveland would say, okay, go ahead and go scorched earth because you could become, it could be considered conduct judgmental. And then all of a sudden we're talking about you voiding some of your $18 million uh, in plus in salary or, or maybe all of it. Um, so Cleveland, I think, is is like I said, just letting the market, you know, come to them a little bit here because they know at some point as the draft approaches, teams, particularly Carolina, particularly Seattle, um, have to start making some decisions about how they feel about um, those young quarterbacks. And I'll give you one little quick example here. Something that could happen. I don't know. I don't have inside information here. I think Atlanta. I think Atlanta really thought long and hard about taking quarterback last year. They ended up taking Kyle Pitts, right? Uh -huh. Now uh -huh. they've got Mark. Now they got Marcus Mariota, right? Um, that's not really. They don't know if that's really a long-term option. I th I don't want to say there's been second guessing, but I would say that Atlanta has a piece of information in its mind now where they said, "Man, we passed on the quarterback last year." Um, Seattle's sitting there at nine, and there's this assumption that well, they'll take Malik Willis. I'm wondering deep down inside me, I'm wondering if maybe Atlanta low key could be a surprise. And I think it's going to be a top 10 filled with surprises. I deep down, I wonder if, if Atlanta doesn't surprise everybody and take Malik Willis at eight. And then, then all of a sudden you're Seattle and you're sitting there going, okay, wow. So this is it. Geno Smith and Drew Locke. That's, that's what we're going with. Like, or, or now are we going to be pushed a little harder um, to make a decision here and maybe go after Baker, whereas we haven't been inclined to do so up until this point. Gotcha. There's still a lot that can happen here. I'm, that's, I guess that's what I'm really trying to get to. Um, how far apart are Kyler and the Cardinals? Because, you know, Kyler's upset and claimed that he's not going to play without a new contract. What I haven't seen we've, seen, we've heard and seen a lot from his agent. What I haven't right. seen is like, what are, what are you asking for? That they won't give you as opposed to just being simple. Oh, they don't want to sign him long term. Well, that depends. What are you looking to get paid? I don't think it's a dime less than 45 million. I'll be honest with you there. Like, I don't I don't think it's a dime less than 45 the Cardinal, million. The Cardinals ain't feeling that the Cardinals are like, no. nah, you ain't that guy. No, and I think you got to look at Cardinals ownership. Like, I, I'll be completely honest here. If you ask me, is there a possibility? I would have told you a month ago, like, hey, there's no possibility they deal Kyler Murray at all. I think the what could change in this is that, you know, Cardinals ownership could sit there and go, okay, like this guy's not coming in. Um, he's, he's serious and he wants $45 million a year. And how, do, how are we gonna approach that? And now we have a team sitting here going, hey, guess what? We'll give you three firsts, three seconds for Kyler Murray. What would you do at that point? Like if you're Cardinals ownership and you're really, and it's really a monetary thing, you're sitting there going, we absolutely cannot pay um, this guy $45 million. It's not happening. He is absolutely not coming in. And now we have someone sitting here offering us three first round picks, three second round picks. You know, is it possible? Is it possible Kyler Murray gets moved between now and the NFL draft or on the doorstep of the NFL draft? I would have said 100% no a month ago. I think the fact that Eric Burkhart, his agent, is really pushing this this hard at this point um, makes me believe that Eric Burkhart probably has a couple of NFL teams in mind that would offer a hellacious draft package, um, pick package for Kyler Murray, maybe players, and that's why he's pushing it the way he's pushing it right now. It's going to come down to whether or not ownership wants to pony up a, a $45 million APY market deal. And I just don't know that Cardinals ownership is is that ownership right now. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So if Kyler Murray gets traded, I, I wouldn't be su surprised this offseason. How could any of us say, wow, I'm shocked. Didn't see that coming. Of course, oh, man, we should that's... have seen it coming. But how about <laughs> some of these wide receivers too? Uh, we see today that hey, Devo Samuel uh, doesn't mm. like his deal. He's probably not going to report and then Terry McLaurin, okay, he doesn't like his deal. He's not going to report AJ Brown. AJ Brown. Which yeah. wide receiver? And then DK Metcalf. We don't know his situation. Which wide receiver? If you had to guess, the guy, this guy's going to be traded definitely. Who's who is that? Um, 
I would say I would say decaf is, D, DK Metcalf is is definitely someone that is potentially tradable um, by the Seattle Seahawks. They just moved their quarterback, okay. And to me, I don't know. Um, depending on if you, if you're sure you've got a young quarterback in coming in, and you're saying, okay, well, we want we have to keep DK in the fold here because we have to we want to grow this young quarterback with DK. Then I could see him being less touchable. I just don't know right now that the Seattle Seahawks absolutely have the quarterback in mind that they want to grow and move forward with um, on that roster. I don't, I don't think that Debo is Debo is such an, a, a major part of that offense for the 49ers, given the versatility of things that he does both in the run game and the pass game, such a tough player. I mean, he adds a ton to that offense's mentality. I would be shocked if the 49ers don't find a way um, to ultimately get that done with him. Um, who else did we mention? There was it was the other option that uh, to me. Um, AJ Brown. Well, there's, there's, there's AJ, AJ Brown. Brown and Terry McLaurin are all the ones that McLaurin. are that are staying away from all season workouts. McLaurin, while they look for McLaurin, the deal. McLaurin, I don't know who out there is willing to give you know the package and the money for for McLaurin. Honestly, um, not only from a health history standpoint, but also in terms of like on the field production. I don't know how many other teams are out there saying, hey, yeah, this is like a 23, 24, 25 million dollar receiver. Um, AJ Brown, that's an interesting one. Um, because, you know, like I said, I was at the owners meetings, you know, I listened to John Robinson say, wide receivers making a lot of money now, <laughs> you know, like clearly I think there's a there's a um, pause right there with, with AJ Brown. And I do think he is a player that, um, if if they were to willing willing to listen to to trade offers, you know, like uh, like the Jets, you tell me the Jets wouldn't give up, you know, one of those top ten picks for AJ Brown, they might, you know, because they're going to probably end up spending, uh, I think, probably that tenth pick on a wide receiver anyway, um, and I think they would view AJ as a number one, a bona fide number one receiver. Um, so I, I guess out of that group, I would say I would probably keep an eye on AJ Brown just because the way I look at all the other. Um, I just can't see Debo Samuel, the 49ers, letting him loose. And, um, you know, if, if DK, I would put, let me put it this way. I put DK at the top. If they are not absolutely locked in on a young quarterback, then I would probably put AJ Brown. Then I put Debo Samuel third. I really wouldn't even put Debo Samuel on the list because I really don't think the 49ers are going to be willing to let him up. All right. Um, last thing for you. Um, this Brady, no disrespect, this Brady urban legend about <laughs> all the all the pieces that were in place for him to be owner oh, and I then a front office executive understand. and then come out of retirement and then get his rights traded and you he retired. Legend, huh? Well, listen, yours, <laughs> bruh, I will never disrespect your reporting. I'm just I, I'm saying I told this to Michael. It just feels like that's a hell of a lot that would have had to all fall into place. And for him to retire in order to get that outcome, only to unretire and play for the same freaking team. It's like I don't know. It just it just feels far fetched. And then send Bruce but, again, Arians to retirement. Okay. And then, okay. and then yeah, it just, but then you okay. but that's why you're you and you and you every time we see you. Hey Charles, how you doing? Yeah, so okay. uh, uh, tell me what's what and, and, and more important. Okay. Why to your point about your article on Yahoo that was shown right now? Why isn't it a bigger deal in the NFL I'm, when it comes to the clear tamp tamper that went on? I can Take answer all these questions. I can answer all these questions. Number yeah. one, Mike yeah. Florio, Mike Florio on your network. Okay, guy who's part of your it team. My network. Mike, I just Mike check here. It's it's mine. Mine. <laughs> it is mine. I'll take it. I'll claim you're it. On, it's you're mine. on the same team. All right. It's, I just work here. <laughs> Mike Florio heard it. Okay. Ben Volan, Boston mm -hmm. Glow heard it. Now South Florida reporters. No, he regurgitated what everybody else said. But go ahead. Now, hey, come but on, now get off Volan. Get off Volan, man. Like that's now, just disrespectful. Okay, no, listen. So now, 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 wait a minute. Now, now, now you have South now you have South Florida reporters out there saying mm -hmm. we heard it. Okay. I heard it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Which is enough for me. Now, now, now again, there's a lot of moving parts there. I agree. There are a lot of moving parts there. But <laughs> Here's the thing. Why are you not giving credence to the fact that first and foremost, let's focus it through this prism. Brian Flores filed a lawsuit and said, hey, my owner tried to get me to tamper with a quarterback yes. 
on right. his yacht him on the boat. in the marina in yeah. Miami, and then later gets reported, oh, it's Tom Brady. Well, okay, yeah. well, if Stephen Ross was interested in Tom Brady then, why mm-hmm. does it not stand to reason that Stephen Ross wouldn't still be interested in Tom oh, Brady? I'm not later? saying you can't, con- I'm not no, saying you can't connect the dots. You didn't okay. even need a lawsuit for that. No, you got now, the now Michigan ties. Else. You okay. got his boys in ownership. I'm okay. not doubting that. Sean Payton. Oh, they're interested in Sean Payton. They asked to talk to Sean Payton. Sean Payton's agent's Don Yee. Tom Brady's mm-hmm. agent is Don Yee. I, okay. Look, there's all these. A lot these, of six degrees lot, of separation the, here. The, yeah, a whole lot yeah. of it, right? The, uh-huh. the Miami uh-huh. Dolphins, you know, all of a sudden they fire Brian Flores, and we're like, why is it taking so long? What's going on with their coaching search? We were on this show yeah. going, what is Miami doing? Why is, it, why is this taking so long? This is weird. Brady retires. And then, and by the way, didn't use the word retire, okay? He did mm-hmm. not say I'm retiring. He said something along mm-hmm. as, you know, he wasn't ready to commit the energy or whatever anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah it kind of floats around. But, but there's always this whole thing, you know, Jim Gray's asking him, Tom, are you retired? Like, are you saying you're retired? You're not coming back? Like, everybody's pushing him. We're like, why is he not being more definitive? What's going on? This is weird. So it kind of lingers out there for a long time. Um, and then all of a sudden he unretires and we're like, wait a minute, this wasn't even six weeks. Like it wasn't even six weeks. Like, like Peyton Manning's making jokes about sending him nice, nice gifts and how he wants his gifts back. Like, and, and so there, there was this big, like, why was this never answered? Well, then all of a sudden you start to factor in, wait a minute, Flores filed this lawsuit. Uh, there's all these factors in here. Like if this had really unfolded this way, they would have circumvented the Rooney rule. There would have been tampering. There's this multitude of different things that would have occurred, you know, for this whole thing to go down. There's there's a lot of stuff that makes sense here. And um, the reason why the NFL would never investigate this, and, and this is a point I made in my column was, okay, if you investigate it um, and you prove, number, let's say, number one, the first tampering incident that Brian Flores claims happened, right? Well, if you prove that that tampering happened, you just prove prior to Brian Flores' lawsuit which by the way, you're named in Brian Flores lawsuit, okay? Then if you go further on down the line and you go, wait a minute, there's this other second element of tampering that also occurred. It means that Stephen Ross, the Dolphins owner, circum- was aiming to circumvent the Rooney rule and mm-hmm. hire Sean Payton, okay? Which means you just proved another part of Brian Flores lawsuit. So why would the NFL have any inclination whatsoever to go, hey, yeah, you're suing us. Let us do some of that work for you. Let us go ahead and, and help you out there by investigating the situation and help prove a couple of things that are in this lawsuit, which then stands to reason. Well, if that's true, hmm, maybe other things in this the suit that are being alleged also have a little more truthfulness to it than than the NFL would like to you know admit. Remember, there's no merit, no merit to that lawsuit. When you come out and say there's no merit, that means you're not going to go out and do the investigative work to prove that there's merit to that suit. So I listen, I know you think it's urban le- legend. I know you think it's mythology, but let's go Charles, back you and said read it, one more. Charles, listen. if you said it, uh, you're, uh, you're, I trust your, uh, bro, we would be having you on here as religiously <laughs> as we do if I didn't swear by your information. So we can leave it there. We got, we got to run. We got to get to our next guest. I, I just think it's a lot, but hey, that's why you do what you do. At the, as well as anybody in the country. And that's why we love you. Because you be knowing. <laughs> so, so don't pay no attention to me. So I'm just here. you back off that now. Now it's not. It's no longer urban legend. It, it, I'm saying I respect Charles country, Robinson. No I'm saying I respect. I'm saying I respect Charles Robinson. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I respect Charles Robinson reporter. I respect we'll, Charles we'll, Robinson. We'll, we're gonna we're gonna put a pin in it. We'll come back to this someday. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It'll be in Charles's book. I respect Charles Robinson's reporting. That's all I will say. All right, Jess. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us three to five p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.